this African landscape of sandstone hills and open savanna is divided by lion prides into hard-won territories, giving lionesses like Manyari the chance to raise their young in relative peace. Manyari tries to get some rest while keeping an eye on her one-year-old cubs. Most evenings, she's out hunting with her sisters. Their role, to provide food for the whole pride. In return, the job of Jambok, the pride male, is to defend their territory, giving the cubs the sanctuary they need to grow and mature. But there's a cruel twist in lion society. Danger comes from their own kind. Out in the bush, two marauding young males seek a territory and pride of their own. Their goal is to defeat the veteran king and take his lionesses for themselves. If they succeed, they will try and kill any cubs under two years old. Manyari is on the alert. It's as if she senses the imminent threat to her offspring. Most lionesses submit to the superior strength of the males. But Manyari is different. She will do anything to save her cubs. Trouble for Manyari's pride begins soon after the summer rains have fallen. In this lush corner of southeast Zimbabwe, the game fans out to take advantage of the new growth, making the defense of a good territory even more crucial to each lion pride. Manyari is lucky. She was born into the Nduna pride, named after this area with its year-round waterholes and plenty of game. The Unduna pride controls the best territory within a protected area of Zimbabwe known as the Malilangwe Game Reserve. Malilangwe's 100,000 acres are famous for their variety of habitats, hosting a rich diversity of wildlife, which rivals any in East Africa. But this bounty means that other lions covered the Unduna Pride's territory. With five lionesses and 11 cubs of assorted ages, Shambok, the only adult male, has his work cut out. At nearly 10 years old, he's done well to keep this large pride together for so long perhaps because he knows when to conserve his energy. The secret of his success lies in Manyari, the most experienced of the pride lionesses, and Magwaza, her sister and hunting partner. Manyari has three cubs, two young males, and a playful female who likes to stick close to her mother. Magwaza's two cubs are several weeks younger. Lionesses spend their lives in their native pride, and the sisterhood is the bond which keeps the pride strong, as they share the task of looking after each other's young. Right now, Jambok is not sleeping. The whole pride is unusually restless.
One of the cubs showers Manyari's daughter with affection. Only a year old, she's oblivious to any danger. But Shambok and Manyari need little reminder. The distant roaring signals that the two nomadic males are trespassing on Unduna Pride territory. They make their intention clear to Jambok and everyone else in the neighborhood. The adults do a quick check on their 11 cubs. Manyari heads for the lookout post. The power-hungry brothers are moving further inside Jambok's territory. They've picked up the scent of the females. Jambok patrols well-worn paths, making sure his presence is known. darkness falls, the young bloods ignore Jambok's scent marks and throw down their challenge, loud and clear. For the pride, it's like the drums of war. fight back. They unite together in a show of vocal strength to make themselves sound larger and fiercer than they are. Manyari and Magwaza should be out hunting for their pride. Now they're shouting hard to try and save the lives of their cubs. Finally, in the small hours, their aggressors fall silent. The ruse seems to have worked, for now. It's been a long night. The pride wakes on empty stomachs. Manyari is up first. With the nomads in the neighborhood, she didn't go far. She checks out the local game. The nearest big prey are also the most dangerous. Manyari means buffalo killer, but a large bull is almost five times heavier than a lioness. 
many of her kin have been gored by horns like these. It would be foolhardy to tackle buffalo alone. But the other lionesses have turned out to help. With the herd spooked, the risk is too great. The females wait until cover of darkness gives them an advantage. They will have to rely on Shambok to do his job and keep his rivals at bay while they are out hunting. shadows, the sisters work as a team and isolate a male. One of them needs to attack. It's Manyari who strikes first. She grapples the rump to avoid the dagger-like horns, while the others keep the bull surrounded. Suddenly, two male intruders are on the scene. The other lionesses back off, but Manyari is reluctant to concede. She has no choice. The two marauding nomads have stolen her prey. These young princes are not expert buffalo hunters like the lionesses, and by morning, they're still trying to wear down their tenacious quarry. For these two groups of lions, this is far more than a tussle over one meal. By stealing this kill from the lionesses, right inside the heart of Jambok's territory, these young bloods have thrown down a second gauntlet and a blatant warning to the whole Unduna pride. With no sign of Jambok, instinct forces Manyari to take action. She greets each of her cubs in turn. And then, ever so casually, she slips away. Her cubs watch her disappear into the bush. Slowly, the three youngsters follow. They seem to understand the need not to draw attention to themselves. But their departure has been spotted by one of the older male cubs. He follows, and four more cubs, including Magwaza's two younger ones, trek out after Manyari. 
her bid to escape, has turned into an exodus. A lioness never usually leaves her pride. It's a huge step and a big risk, which Manyari took to save her cubs. But now she has far more than she bargained for. She's got eight inexperienced youngsters relying totally on her. Not only will she have the nomads on her back, by disappearing with so many cubs, she'll also have angered Jambok. She has to get this unlikely gang as far away as fast as she can. But the pace is slow, maybe because the younger ones don't see the need for urgency. Jambok has lost his best hunter and eight cubs. But he still has four lionesses and three cubs to fight for. The two assailants are closing in. Jambok has no choice. He has to assert his authority. He heads out to confront the intruders. It's time to make a last stand and save the rest of his pride. The battle was swift. The veterans stood little chance against two young bloods spoiling for a fight. Cast out into the wilderness, for the first time in years, he will have to fend for himself until old age overwhelms him. A day later, Manyari is still trying to cover the miles with her eight dependents. The cubs are beginning to flag. It seemed like a big adventure, but now they're bored with the long journey. Some of them just want to play. Manyari chivies them on. They reach a rocky outcrop where she can keep a lookout with a bit of unwanted help from the baboon troop. And at last she gives them a break. Manyari can't afford to stop. These cubs haven't yet learned to hunt. They're all relying on her to provide food. She's used to working with her sisters. Now she'll have to hunt alone. She targets buffalo, risky without Magwaza, but she has eight hungry mouths to feed. 
she's not alone. The youngsters are keen to join in. With the bravado of youth, they seem oblivious of the danger. Nyari has the calf. She leaves it to her eager apprentices to make their first kill. But the buffalo haven't given up. Females with calves are the most dangerous of all. They bunch together to form a battering ram. This calf had a lucky escape and might even survive. By letting naive youngsters face this herd of buffalo, Manyari gambled with their lives. It's as if she knows that her cubs will have to grow up faster than they should. Manyari's young may be seriously hungry, but at least they're alive. Back in Unduna, the two brothers have made themselves at home. They have claimed Jambok's old territory and his females. Daylight reveals why Manyari took such enormous risks to flee with her cubs. The lionesses which stayed behind paid the ultimate price. Awful though it seems, incoming male lions kill young cubs for good reason. Their own reign as head of the pride may be short. By killing the cubs, they bring the females into estrus sooner, giving them a chance to father their own offspring to maturity before other males move in to steal their lionesses. Days later, and Manyari must hunt again. This is the relentless life she has chosen, teaching her charges, keeping them fed. Gone are the days when she could snooze through the sunlit hours. With the cubs more a hindrance than a help, she sneaks off without them. She finds some wildebeest. In Malilangwe, small wildebeest herds are resident all year round.
she's vulnerable out in the open and tries to drag the meal into cover. The hungry adolescents have noted her absence. They're ready and waiting. The alarm calls of the baboons suggest that Manyari is nearby. It's a small kill, and Manyari takes the opportunity to feed first. She needs to keep her own strength up. but the youngsters are too hungry to show their elder any respect. One calf doesn't divide into nine easily. Each has to fight for their share of the action. Manyari has only had scraps, but with the meal demolished, they're all friends again. Every moment she shares with these affectionate juveniles is borrowed time. Sound travels in the still of the night, and she can hear the power-hungry brothers laying their claim. Now the Unduna pride females have accepted their reign, the princes spend more time exploring their new territory. They pick up Banyari's scent from one of her hunting forays. For these males, Manyari is unfinished business. They know she's out there with the youngsters. They need to track down the cubs. They can't allow any young lions on their turf, which could one day be a threat to their reign. Manyari is aware the brothers are on her trail. She rouses the group. Once again, like refugees, they're forced to up sticks and move on. The dry season is beginning to bite, and the game will concentrate around familiar waterholes. But Manyari takes them beyond the borders of her homeland into unknown territory. Her pupils are older now. They're learning fast, but they're still not ready for independence. Somehow Manyari needs to buy these young lions more time. The brothers have brought down an adult giraffe. They've been traveling in the same direction as Manyari's group. These two strong males are in their prime, and they're not afraid to extend their hunting territory. 
While the brothers have more than enough meat to sustain them, eight large cubs are too many for one lioness. Manyari is struggling to keep their bellies full. She needs to bring down larger prey. Zebra stripes are designed to confuse her. As they twist and turn, she must keep her focus on her target. In full flight, she didn't even see the jagged stump which tore into her. Injuries as bad as these are usually fatal. Yet slowly, incredibly, Manyari keeps herself moving. If she lies down, she will give up. Loss of blood means she is dangerously dehydrated. She needs to find water, yet she can barely walk. She licks her lips, trying to find moisture to clean her wounds but it's too painful to reach them. Her eight dependents are still waiting in hope of a meal. The oldest and most impatient leads the search. There is no food. There is only Manyari, with life draining from her body. Her daughter tries to rouse her. The youngsters are a reminder that she has something to fight for. She collapsed only a few feet from water. With her daughter hovering protectively, she slakes her thirst.
she cleans her wounds. The risk of infection and blood poisoning is huge. She can barely tolerate her daughter near her. The other hungry youngsters are on edge. The brothers are still hot on their trail. These sub-adults seem to accept that their mentor can no longer help them. Five of them abandon her. The female tries one last time to rally her mother. Hunger wins and she and her brother follow the other siblings into the night. Manyari calls them back. She's aware the marauding males are out there. This time, there's nothing she can do. The naive youngsters have already picked up the irresistible sound of a lion hunt. They're wary, yet hunger makes them reckless. They move headlong towards danger. Surprisingly, the killer makes way for them at the feast. For this is Magwaza's kill. Mealtime is not the place for greetings. But for once, the cubs get a lucky break. Magwaza, Manyari's sister, has found her own long-lost cubs. The wounded lioness can hear the feasting. Fighting searing pain, she forces her body to move. Manyari makes it to her family. For the first time in months, someone has provided for her. It looks as though Magwaza plans to stay around and keep an eye on her wayward, accident-prone sister. She's so far from Nduna that this is unlikely to be a chance encounter. Like the brothers, Magwaza must have been tracking her sister and their offspring. For Manyari, it will be a long, painful road to recovery. 
But with her sister on hand to help, she stands a chance. Magwaza instinctively takes over from the injured lioness, hunting and providing for the fledgling pride. The juveniles don't care who catches their food. With the oldest cub now nearly two years, they're just happy to be well fed. As the days pass, Manyari has been cleaning her wounds scrupulously. She's healing well. This ragtaggle group is beginning to look less like refugees and more like a normal pride. Just occasionally, they even snooze in the sunshine. But Magwaza is aware of the urgency, and there is room for improvement in the hunting technique of the youngsters. She gives them a crash course in who best to avoid. Finally, one evening, Magwaza leads all eight sub-adults out on a serious hunting mission. Manyari joins them. After everything she's done for the cubs, she's not going to miss their ultimate test, buffalo at night. It's a big challenge for Manyari too. Will she still have the strength and agility to live up to her name and face down Africa's most volatile prey? Sisters have done their bit and back off, leaving their pupils to finish the job. It's a coming of age. In the weeks and months to come, these half-brothers and sisters will have to sort out their own squabbles and form a new hierarchy. Against the odds, Manyari, with Magwaza's help, has raised all eight cubs so they're ready for independence. This family cannot stay together as a pride because the two princes will always covet the females and see these young males as a threat to their reign. The sisters risked their lives for their cubs. Now the best thing they can do for their young is drive them away.
Suddenly, the moment is upon them. The brothers have sneaked up unawares. This is not the time to linger over lengthy farewells. Nyari turns back to face her challenger. Once again, she risks her life. If she can just distract the males for long enough, her sister tries the same ruse. giving the youngsters a chance to escape. Now these young lions really are on their own. They had a shaky start, and had to grow up fast. Thanks to the courage of two unusual lionesses, they have a fair chance of making it. For Manyari and Magwaza, it's time to return from exile and resume their place back in their old pride. The sisters will accept the same males who are determined to kill their cubs as their new protectors. As if their flight into the wilderness never happened. The lionesses will hunt buffalo for the whole pride and consort with their old enemies because this is how it works in lion society. Only Manyari did things differently. She defied the usual order and saved her cubs. Truly an extraordinary lioness.